It's obviously this is a fantastic way to encourage people to get vaccinated, tell them that they don't have to wear masks as much. Is it also risky? Just six weeks ago, Dr. Rochelle Walensky was warning about impending doom. I think we have to balance the idea that we want to show people that there are going to be benefits from getting vaccinated. Uh, we have to balance that with the fact of we still want to control this virus. Uh, and there are still many parts of the country that have rates of virus that are too high. But overall, the vaccination campaign, probably combined with the warm weather that's coming, has resulted in a, a pretty dramatic reduce, reduction in virus spread here in the U.S. And we need to power through, people have mentioned the 70% of the adult population number. We need to continue to power through and get to as high a level as possible. And hopefully this is one of those things that will help mm -hmm. us get there. I, I must admit I'm excited about the prospect of not having to wear a mask all the time. But at the same time, I also cast a nervous eye toward India, toward the UK, where the variant first found in India is spreading. Should that make me nervous, even if I'm vaccinated? Well, I like to think of things in two ways. In terms of the general public, uh, you shouldn't be worried right now. The vaccines that are here in the U.S. are covering all the variants that we've seen right now. Um, the situation in India, it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a tragedy of the, of, of the exponential proportions. Um, but what's going on in India sort of mirrors the other things that are going on with variants in this country. Those are things that keep me up at night or in this case maybe get me up early in the morning uh, because we as scientists want to continue to monitor this virus see how it's changing and look for those changes in the virus that are causing it to be either even more easily transmissible or uh, evade vaccine immunity but right now the vaccines that we have here in the u.s are working really really well against all variants out there so the general public right now shouldn't be concerned about this they should just continue to get out there and line up to get those vaccines in their arms Andrew, I'm so excited to have you, especially on a day like today. So thank you so much for waking up early for us. When you look at what we, you know, what we know about the vaccines, so they protect you, they're, you know, they have a, a good efficacy rate. If I catch it, because people are still testing positive, even if they're vaccinated, can you still pass it on to someone? Is there, I mean, do you transmit it without catching it yourself? Yeah, this is some of the great data that has come out since the clinical trials. Um, it certainly looks like particularly in the case of the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccines, that you're much less likely to get infected and pass the virus on if you're vaccinated. You know, we're seeing a focus on the cases of people who are vaccinated and gotten infected, but we really have to put that into context and compare it to the millions of other people that have been vaccinated and have not had any signs of infection. So I think this vac these vaccines have really come out to be fantastic, probably better than I would have ever hoped to have been in terms of protecting against severe disease, regular symptomatic disease, and now we're seeing the data that says it's even protecting from transmission. So things are working. Um, you know, it's still not a bad idea to have a mask around. Um, groups are always an issue still right now because you want to make sure that you're not coming into contact with large numbers of unvaccinated people. But these vaccines are really working, and that message really has to get out there to the general population. They're safe and they're efficacious, and they're turning the corner on this pandemic, at least here in the U.S., Andrew, I mean, one of their big stories today is, of course, that Singapore has to go back into the lockdowns that we saw a year ago because they can't really figure out why some, you know, some uh, there are virus cases resurging and they can't figure out where. I know only 20 percent of the population have been vaccinated, but sh should we worry about these kind of symptomatic, you know, cases, especially from islands that have actually been doing really well in trying to keep the COVID at bay? Absolutely. And again, as virologists, we're always looking for those outbreaks to try to see if there are signatures there that are simply sort of reflective of the fact that maybe a large percentage of the population wasn't vaccinated, as you just mentioned, in Singapore. Um, or is it something that's changing about the virus? And I think we in the U.S. here have been incredibly uh, uh, beneficial by this vaccination 
process that has come out and the ability of the U.S. government to get vaccine here. We have to continue to think, though, about this as a global disease. The U.K. variant is now the dominant virus here in the U.S., and that's an example of a virus that was that emerged in the U.K. during a period of uncontrolled uh, virus spread that spread to the U.S. That same scenario could happen in Singapore, from Indi Indi India and other places. So mm. we need to make sure to keep our global eye on reducing cases as much as we're keeping our eye on getting our U.S. vaccination uh, plan uh, implemented 100%. Here in the U.S., of course, teenagers can now get vaccinated after the approval of the Pfizer-BioNTech shot for 12 to 15-year-olds. Is that necessary to reach herd immunity? Every vaccinated person is going to help us uh, reduce the spread of this virus. Um, we still want to aim for greater than 70 percent of the adult population, but immunizing kids is going to particularly help us when it comes to schools in the fall, because those are the areas where, obviously, children congregate together, and having some level of immunity in those situations is going to help reduce the spread at schools, um, spread between kids, spread to teachers and staff at schools. So. This is a really good thing. You're seeing a burst of people who have been enthusiastic about vaccinating their kids. It'll be the same thing in that population as we are in the adults. We we can't just get 20 or 30 percent of those people vaccinated. We have to get up to high levels of vaccination. We're not sure what that level is with kids. But again, the more the better. And this vaccine has performed even better in that age group than it did in the adults. Mm -hmm. So again, so many good signs with this vaccine in terms of safety and efficacy. Andrew, um, one of the, the most difficult questions is that do you trust people to actually, when they say they've been vaccinated, <clears throat> apologies, when they say they've vaccinated, do you take it at face value or do you need to have some kind of system of vaccination passports or a vaccination card? Yeah, this is one of the issues that I really do worry about. Um, obviously, vaccination cards are a bit controversial. Um, I really do think, though, that you have to have some way to validate that people are getting vaccinated because, again, when you get together in large groups, which will be the next step of in terms of release, right, we'll be getting back to stadiums full of base, full, full of fans at baseball games. And in those situations, bringing together individuals who aren't vaccinated, who perhaps think that because there's vaccine, vaccines in the population that they're somewhat more safe, is going to set up these situations where we can have bursts of infection. So it really is important for everybody to get vaccinated. The issue of how you validate that or verify that is a controversial one.